Inside this globe the soul roars like thunder. And now silence, my strict tutor. I won't try to talk about shams. Language cannot touch that present. I is in the king's pearl. One day the king assembled his courtiers. He handed the minister a glowing pearl. What would you say this is worth? More gold than a hundred donkeys could carry. Break it. Sir, how could I waste your resources? Like that, the king presented him with a robe of honor for his answer and took back the pearl. He talked a while to the assembly on various topics. Then he put the pearl in the chamberlain's hand. What would it sell for? Half the kingdom, God preserve it. Break it, my hand could not move to do such a thing. The king rewarded him with a robe of honor and an increase in his salary, and so it went with each of the 50 or 60 courtiers. One by one, they imitated the minister and the chamberlain and received new wealth. Then the pearl was given to Ayan. Can you say how splendid this is? It's more than I can say. Then break it. Z26. This second, into tiny pieces. Ayas had had a dream about this, and he hid in two stones in his sleeve. He crushed the pearl to powder between them. As Joseph at the bottom of the well listened to the end of his story, so such listeners understand success and unsuccess is one thing. Don't worry about forms. If someone wants your horse, let him have it. Horses are for hurrying ahead of the others. The court assembly screamed at the recklessness of Ayas, how can you do that? What the king says is worth more than any pearl. I honor the king, not some colored stone. The princes immediately fell on their knees and put their foreheads on the ground. Their sighs went up like a smoke cloud asking forgiveness. The king gestured to his executioner as though to say, take out this trash. I is sprang forward, your mercy makes them bow like this. Give them their lives. Let them keep hoping for union with you. They see their forgetfulness now, as the drunken man did when he said, I didn't know what I was doing, and then someone pointed out, that you invited that forgetfulness into you. You drank it. There was a choice. They know deeply now how imitation lulled them to sleep. Don't separate yourself from them. Look at all their heads against the floor. Raise their faces into yours. Let them wash in your cool washing place. Z27. Ayas and his speech always get to this point and then the pen breaks. How can a saucer contain the ocean? The drunks break their cups, but you poured that wine. Ayas said, you picked me to crush the pearl. Don't punish the others for my drunken obedience. Punish them when I'm sober, because I'll never be sober again. Whoever bows down like they are bowing down will not rise up in his old self again. Like a gnat in your buttermilk, they've become your buttermilk. The mountains are trembling, their map and compass are the lines in your palm. Awesome. I need a hundred mouths to say this, but I only have this one. A hundred thousand impressions from the spirit are wanting to come through here. I feel stunned in this abundance, crushed and dead. Put this design in your carpet. Spiritual experience is a modest woman who looks lovingly at only one man. It's a great river where ducks live happily, and crows grow. The visible role of form contains food that is both nourishing and a source of heartburn. There is an unseen presence we honor that gives the gifts. 128. 
pure water, near the millstone, pure wind, were dust blown up into shapes, pure spirit, near the opening and closing of our hands, near the clarity, were this language that tries to say it, near joy, were all the different kinds of laughing. Any movement or sound is a profession of faith, as the millstone grinding is explaining how it believes in the river. No metaphor can say this, but I can't stop pointing to the beauty. Every moment and place says, put this design in your carpet. Like the shepherd in book two, who wanted to pick the light off God's road, and stitch up God's shoes, I want to be in such a passionate adoration that my tent gets pitched against the sky. Let the beloved come and sit like a guard dog in front of the tent. When the ocean surges, don't let me just hear it. Let it splash inside my chest. H-A-L-L-A-J Halich said what he said and went to the origin through the hole in the scaffold. I cut a cap's worth of cloth from his robe, and it swamped over me from head to foot. Years ago, I broke a bunch of roses from the top of his wall. A thorn from that is still in my palm, working deeper. Z29 From Halich, I learned to hunt lions but I became something hungrier than a lion. I was a frisky colt. He broke me with a quiet hand on the side of my head. A person comes to him naked. It's cold. There's a fur coat floating in the river. Jump in and get it, he says. You dive in. You reach for the coat. It reaches for you. It's a live bear that has fallen in upstream, drifting with the current. How long does it take? Alan yells from the bank. Don't wait. You answer. This coat has decided to wear me home. A little part of the story, a hint. Do you need long sermons on Alan? We free. My love wanders the loons, melodious, food notes, plucked wires, full of the wine the Magi drank on the way to Bethlehem. We are free. The moon comes from its quiet corner, took a pitcher of water down in the center. The circle of surface flames. One of his meals to kiss the threshold. One drinks with wine flames playing over his face. One watches the gathering, and says to any cold onlookers, This dance is the joy of existence. 130. I am filled with mood. Skin, blood, bone, brain, and soul. There's no room for lack of trust, or trust. Nothing in this existence but that existence. 131. 12. I the shape. I have such a teacher. On the shape. The existence of the beloved is not provable, nor is it fantasy. The friend, as Rumi usually calls this presence within an infinitely beyond the senses, is elusive and nearer than the big vein on your neck. You need a mirror to see it. The shape of the mirror, a reminder of that presence, and a cook. The understanding that comes through the shape gives nourishment and transforming energy to many. Rumi's image of a disciple is a chickie that sprouts and enjoys the rainy garden of sexual pleasure. It matures to its heart and form, then gets picked and thrown in the cooking pot. The cook's tending is careful and constant. And, in Rumi's case, perilous. Gradually the disciple softens and takes on flavors the cook adds. Eventually he or she becomes tasty enough to be appealing to those who in the Sufi tradition are called the true human beings. So the chickpea moves from garden to cooking pot to a taste for the cook, finally to become sustenance for a mysterious community. 
chickpea to cook. The chickpea leaps almost over the rim of the pot where it's being boiled. Why are you doing this to me? The cook knocks him down with the ladle. Don't you try to jump out. You think I'm torturing you. I'm giving you flavor. 232. So you can mix with spices and rice and be the lovely vitality of a human being. Remember when you drank rain in the garden? That was for this. Grace first. Sexual pleasure. Then a boiling new life begins, and the friend has something good to eat. Eventually the chickpea will say to the cook, boil me some more. Hit me with a skimming spoon. I can't do this by myself. I'm like an elephant that dreams of gardens back in Hindustan and doesn't pay attention to his driver. You're my cook, my driver, my way into existence. I love your cooking. The cook says, I was once like you, fresh from the ground. Then I boiled in time, and boiled in the body, two fierce boilings. My animal soul grew powerful. I controlled it with practices, and boiled some more, and boiled once beyond that, and became your teacher. I have such a teacher. Last night my teacher taught me the lesson of poverty, having nothing and wanting nothing. I am a naked man standing inside a mine of rubies, clothed in red silk. I absorb the shining and now I see the ocean, billions of simultaneous motions. C-33 Moving in me, a circle of lovely, quiet people becomes the ring on my finger. Then the wind and thunder of rain on the way. I have such a teacher. Sublime generosity. I was dead, then alive. Weeping, then laughing. The power of love came into me, and I became fierce like a lion, then tender like the evening star. He said, you're not mad enough. You don't belong in this house. I went wild and had to be tied up. He said, still not wild enough to stay with us. I broke through another layer into joyfulness. He said, it's not enough. I died. He said, you're a clever little man, full of fantasy and doubting. I plucked out my feathers and became a fool. He said, now you're the candle for this assembly. But I'm no candle, look, I'm scattered smoke. He said, you are the shape, the guy. But I'm not a teacher, I have no power. He said, you already have wings. I cannot give you wings. Point three four. But I wanted his wings. I felt like some flightless chicken. Then new events said to me, don't move. A sublime generosity is coming toward you. And old love said, stay with me. I said, I will. You are the fountain of the sun's light. I am a little shadow on the ground. You make my raggedness silky. The soul of dawn is like darkened water that slowly begins to say thank you, thank you. Then at sunset, again, Venus gradually changes into the moon and then the whole night ski. This comes of smiling back at his smile. The chess master says nothing, other than moving the silent chess piece. That I am part of the ploys of this game makes me amazingly happy. Like this. If anyone asks you how the perfect satisfaction of all our sexual wanting will look, lift your face and say, like this. When someone mentions the gracefulness of the night ski, climb up on the roof and dance and say, like this. Z35. If anyone wants to know what spirit is or what God's fragrance, means, lean your head toward him or her. Keep your face there close.
like this. When someone quotes the old poetic image about clouds gradually uncovering the moon, slowly loosen knot by knot the strings of your robe. Like this. If anyone wonders how Jesus raised the dead, don't try to explain the miracle. Kiss me on the lips. Like this. Like this. When someone asks what it means to die for love, point here. If someone asks how tall I am, frown and measure with your fingers the space between the creases on your forehead. This tall. The soul sometimes leaves the body, then returns. When someone doesn't believe that, walk back into my house. Like this. When lovers moan, they're telling our story. Like this. I am a sky where spirits live. Stare into this deepening blue, while the breeze says a secret. Like this. When someone asks what there is to do, light the candle in his hand. Like this. 136. How did Joseph's scent come to Jacob? How did Jacob's sight return? A little wind cleans the eyes. Cool. Like this. When Shams comes back from Tabriz, he'll put just his head around the edge of the door to surprise us. Like this. A bowl. Imagine the time the particle you'll return where it came from. The family darling comes home. Wine, without being contained in cups, is handed around. Food. A red glint appears in a granite outcrop, and suddenly the whole cliff turns to ruby. At dawn I walk along with a monk on his way to the monastery. We do the same work, I told him. We suffer the same. He gave me a bowl. And I saw, the soul has this shape. Sham, you the teach is an actual sunlight. Help me now. Being in the middle is being partly in myself, and partly outside. 37. Wax. When I see you and how you are, I close my eyes to the other. For your Solomon seal I become wax throughout my body. I wait to be light. I give up opinions on all matters. I become the reed food for your breath. You were inside my hand. I kept reaching around for something. I was inside your hand, but I kept asking questions of those who know very little. I must have been incredibly simple or drunk or insane to sneak into my own house and steal money, to climb over the fence and take my own vegetables. But no more. I've gotten free of that ignorant fist that was pinching and twisting my secret self. The universe and the light of the stars come through me. I am the crescent moon put up over the gate to the festival. No room for form. On the night when you cross the street from your shop in your house to the cemetery, you'll hear me hailing you from inside the open grave, and you'll realize how we've always been together. I am the clear consciousness core of your being, the same in ecstasy as in self-hating fatigue. That night, when you escape the fear of snakebite and all irritation with the ants, you'll hear my familiar voice, see the candle being lit. 38. Smell the incense, the surprise meal fixed by the lover inside all your other lovers. This hard tumult is my signal to you igniting in the tomb. So don't fuss with the crowd in the graveyard road dust. Those get ripped open and washed away in the music of our finally meeting. And don't look for me in a human shape. I am inside here looking. No room for form with love this strong. Beat the drum and let the poets speak.
This is a day of purification for those who are already mature and initiated into what love is. No need to wait until we die. There's more to want here than money and being famous and life of roasted meat. Now, what shall we call this new sort of gazing house that has opened in our town where people sit quietly and pour out their glancing like light, like answering? Childhood friends. You may have heard, it's the custom for kings to let warriors stand on the left, the side of the heart, and courage. On the right they put the chancellor, and various secretaries, which is the practice of bookkeeping and writing usually belongs to the right hand. In the center, the suffix, which is in meditation they become mirrors. The king can look at their faces and see his original state. 39. Give the beautiful ones mirrors, and let them fall in love with themselves. That way they polish their souls and kindle remembering in others. A close childhood friend once came to visit Joseph. They had shared the secrets that children tell each other when they're lying on their pillows at night before they go to sleep. These two are completely truthful with each other. The friend asked, what was it like when you realized your brothers were jealous and what they planned to do? I felt like a lion with a chain around its neck. Not degraded by the chain, and not complaining, but just waiting for my power to be recognized. How about down in the well, and in prison? How was it then, like the moon when it's getting smaller, yet knowing the fullness to come? Like a seed curl ground in the mortar for medicine, that knows it will now be the light in a human eye. Like a wheat grain that breaks open in the ground, then grows, then gets harvested, then crushed in the mill for flour, then baked, then crushed again between teeth to become a person's deepest understanding. Lost in love, like the song the planters sing the night after they sow the seed. There is no end to any of this. Back to something else the good man and Joseph talked about. Ah my friend, what have you brought me? You know a traveler should not arrive empty-handed at the door of a friend like me. That's going to the grinding stone without your wheat. 140. God will ask at the resurrection, did you bring me a present? Did you forget? Did you think you wouldn't see me? Joseph kept teasing, let's have it. I want my gift. The guest began, you can't imagine how I worked for something for you. Nothing seemed appropriate. You don't take gold down into a gold mine, or a drop of water to the Sea of Oman. Everything I thought of was like bringing human seed to Kermanshah where human comes from. You have all seeds in your barn. You even have my love and my soul, so I can't even bring those. I brought you a mirror. Look at yourself, and remember me. He took the mirror out from his world where he was hiding it. What is the mirror of being? Non-being, always bring a mirror of non-existence as a gift. Any other present is foolish. Let the poor man look deep into generosity. Let bread see a hungry man. Let kindling behold a spark from the flint. An empty mirror in your worst destructive habits, when they are held up to each other, that's when the real making begins. That's what art and crafting are. A tailor needs a torn garment to practice his expertise. The trunks of trees must be cut and cut again so they can be used for fine carpentry. Your doctor must have a broken leg to doctor. Your defects are the ways that glory gets manifested. Whoever sees clearly what's diseased in himself begins to gallop on the way. Four feet. 
There is nothing worse than thinking you are well enough. More than anything, self-complacency blocks the workmanship. Put your vileness up to a mirror and weep. Get that self-satisfaction flowing out of you. Satan thought, I am better than Adam, and that better than is still strongly in us. Your stream water may look clean, but there's unstirred matter on the bottom. Your shape can dig a side channel that will drain that waste off. Trust your wound to a teacher's surgery. Flies collect on a wound. They cover it. Those flies of your self-protecting feelings, your love for what you think is yours. Let a teacher wave away the flies and put a plaster on the moon. Don't turn your head, keep looking at the bandage place. That's where the light enters you. And don't believe for a moment that you're healing yourself. The mouse and the camel. A mouse caught hold of a camel's lead rope in his two forelegs and walked off with it, imitating the camel drivers. The camel went along, letting the mouse feel heroic. Enjoy yourself, he thought. I have something to teach you, presently. They came to the edge of a great river. The mouse was dumbfounded. 42. What are you waiting for? Step forward into the river. You are my leader. Don't stop here. I'm afraid of being drowned. The camel walked into the water. It's only just above the knee. Your knee. Your knee is a hundred times over my head. Well, maybe you shouldn't be leading a camel. Stay with those like yourself. A mouse has nothing really to say to a camel. Would you help me get across? Get up on my hump. I am made to take hundreds like you across. You are not a prophet, but go humbly on the way of the prophets, and you can arrive where they are. Don't try to steer the boat. Don't open a shop by yourself. Listen, keep silent. You are not God's mouthpiece. Try to be an ear, and if you do speak, ask for explanations. The source of your arrogance and anger is your lust and the rootedness of that is in your habits. Someone who makes a habit of eating clay gets mad when you try to keep him from it. Being a leader can also be a poisonous habit, so that when someone questions your authority, you think, he's trying to take over. You may respond courteously, but inside you rage. Always check your inner state with the Lord of your heart. Copper doesn't know it's copper, until it's changed to gold. Your loving doesn't know it's majesty, until it knows it's helplessness. 143. These kicks from the friend, a robe of skin and veins, a teacher within, wear them and become a school, with a greater shape nearby. The lame goat. You've seen a herd of goats going down to the water. The lame and dreamy goat brings up the rear. There are worried faces about that one, but now they're laughing, because look, as they return, that goat is leading. There are many different kinds of knowing. The lame goat's kind is a branch that traces back to the roots of presence. Learn from the lame goat, and leave the herd home. 144. 13. X Recognizing Elegance. Your reasonable father, on elegance. The sudden opening of one's eyes to the elaborate, extravagant beauty around us. Watching Madagascan meerkats on the Discovery Channel. The gorgeous dirt road down to the river. 300 million galaxies. The gold around a frog's eye. The intricacy of the present moment, all the wealth we need. Rumi feels this abundance, and his gratitude for it pours out the waterfall of his work.
It may be that the clarity Rumi calls reason is the brilliant lawfulness that ecologists and astronomers examine as the coherent.